A couple of months ago, I was set a challenge. Two of my friends said that they'd like to come on a cruise with me, and even though I've been cruising for years, picking a first cruise for somebody else is definitely not easy. The pressure was on, they were trusting me not just with their money, but also with their time. I knew that they wouldn't like a formal cruise line or one with strict dress codes, and I was pretty sure that they would like a newer, more modern cruise ship. Those things alone wouldn't be too difficult, but I also knew that they wanted to cruise from the UK and that we were on a pretty strict budget. When I saw a six night MSC cruise advertised for £320 per person, I hoped that this would be the answer. I've had some great experiences with MSC in the past and some that definitely weren't so good. It isn't uncommon to see complaints about MSC's food, their entertainment, their service, but for £53 per night, I figured it couldn't go too wrong. It was cheaper than any budget hotel on land. We boarded the MSC Preziosa around midday and embarkation was so incredibly easy. We had to show our passports, our COVID vaccine certificates and our cruise tickets, but that was it. There were no more COVID tests or any other checks. We went straight through security in this very cool cruise terminal and our cruise then was ready to start. I did notice straight away that my cruise card said late dining on it. I had requested early dining before the cruise, but I thought it'll be fine. I'll sort it out when I get on the ship. MSC's pre and post cruise customer service is not the best, sometimes it just doesn't exist, but I've always found that the staff on board are lovely, so it's usually easier just to wait and sort out your problems on the ship. Preziosa was built in 2011, and my most recent MSC cruises have been on the newer and the bigger MSC ships. I didn't know how I would like going back to a smaller and older ship. I knew that to my friends though, this ship would still be absolutely huge. At full capacity, the ship does hold over 4,000 guests, so she's definitely not small. Not on any scale is she a small ship. We walked straight into the ship and arrived in this big atrium. The atrium was sparkly, it was shiny, and it was exactly what I expected from MSC. Every step in the staircase has crystals in it, and it is estimated that every single step costs $10,000. I often joke that MSC stands for the most sparkly cruise and I personally love this modern design. Even though this ship is over 10 years old, she still felt brand new to me. The staff were constantly cleaning and the MSC ships are definitely some of my favourites. MSC actually have a signature scent that you can buy on board in the gift shop. You can buy it as a room spray, you can buy it as a perfume, and it is the smell in the shower gel that you will use on an MSC cruise. For some reason, the MSC app that we used a lot on our last MSC cruise isn't supported on the older ships like Preziosa. I've never known a cruise line before to only have its app work on some of its ships. I've become so used to using apps on cruises to check my onboard account or things like the daily schedule or the deck plans so I did wonder if it would feel like I was going back in time. I did come up with a few hacks to compensate for the lack of an app, but more about that later. MSC cruises do vary a lot depending on where the ship is sailing and who is on the cruise. As we were booking a round trip from the UK, I did expect most people on this cruise to be British, but I was completely wrong about that. On this cruise, there were 62 different nationalities, and I don't know how many different languages. In every single port on this cruise, we picked up new guests. I'm pretty sure more got on in Southampton than anywhere else, but every single day, new people came and the existing people left. As we embarked, there were lots of crew members trying to sell us drinks packages, specialty dining, spa treatments. This is pretty common on an MSC cruise, and given how little we'd paid for the cruise to begin with, I wasn't surprised that MSC would try and get money from us this way. I didn't buy a drinks package and I didn't plan on spending any money on speciality dining or spa treatments. Normally I'll check on my phone on the app how much I'm spending, so I hope that without that app I would still be able to keep my spend down. I had a couple of tasks on my first day to-do list and it was to complete the safety drill, to find my cabin and to sort out the dining times. We headed straight out to the top deck to get a drink and then decided to find our cabins. MSC had a balcony offer upgrade on at the time, so every person I met on this ship who had booked a guaranteed inside cabin had been upgraded to a balcony. I did meet one person on board who was still in an inside cabin and they were there because they had picked their specific cabin location and they wanted to keep that one. I didn't know how much we would use the balcony in reality. We were sailing around Northern Europe in October. Every place that we went to was very industrial and because we had quite long days in port, it was dark for every sail in and sail away. 
We first went to my friend's cabin in the middle of the ship. They were assigned a junior balcony on deck 12. It did feel quite small and it was missing the sofa that I'm used to in most balconies, but I loved this design and it felt very modern. It felt very clean. It had all of the usual things, a TV, a safe, a fridge, a hairdryer, and of course there is a bathroom. My cabin was further forward on deck 12 and I actually did film a time lapse of me walking the length of deck 12. This ship isn't a particularly big ship, but walking from one end to the other still took me three and a half minutes. This is one reason why some people turn down cabin upgrades because if you're upgraded, you can be given a cabin anywhere on the ship and you could be three and a half minutes away from your friends. It didn't matter to us because we would just kind of meet in the public spaces. Our cabin was a premium balcony that measured in at 18 meters squared. The junior balcony was 14 meters squared, so it was quite a bit smaller. The design was the same, but our cabin was just a little bit longer and our balcony space was a little bit bigger. Still pretty small, but a little bit bigger. We could see the bridge from our cabin as we were very, very close to the front. I'd often see people up here working away, usually inside the bridge, but sometimes I would see people cleaning the outside. I have no idea how much this person got paid, but however much it is, it is not enough. Give this guy a pay rise. We had loads of storage in our cabin and we had everything that we needed. A kettle would have been a nice addition and MSC do sometimes add kettles to their cruises that are sailing from the UK. But because Prezios is only doing a couple more cruises from England, I think they decided to keep the kettles and I can't blame them. The bathroom had one of my favourite features that I've ever seen on a cruise ship. The shower doors folded inwards into the shower so that when you aren't using it, there's more space in the bathroom. This means that there's more space on the toilet, which is great for plus size guests. And it meant that when I was drying off after a shower, I didn't keep banging into that door. Sadly, MSC haven't done this on any of their newer ships, which I think is a shame. I thought this was great and it worked very well as a shower door too. It didn't kind of leak into the room. The safety drill was different from my last couple of MSC cruises and it may have been because of that lack of an app. In the past, you used to do safety drills all in one time at one place, but more recently you'll kind of watch the videos on your cabin TV or you'll watch them on the app and you'll just do it whenever you're ready. On this cruise, I saw in the daily schedule that the safety drill was at a set time, which I thought was strange, but basically we all just had to watch the same safety videos in our cabins at the same time and then go to our muster station so that we knew where we would go in an emergency. It was a little odd, but it did get the job done. And I think that a little odd that gets the job done could be MSC's tagline. It describes most things on this cruise. My friends had decided to buy the drinks package, so they sat down to have a drink. I didn't purchase one, and this was the reason why we needed to sort out our dining. When picking our dining before the cruise, the website told us that we couldn't sit together because my friends had a drinks package and I didn't. Because we'd also been assigned the wrong dining time, we decided that we would go to the restaurant, ask to be changed to early dining and to sit together. The staff who were working there were very friendly, they were very polite, they wrote a note of it and they said that from tomorrow we would change to early dining. We did actually go to late dining on the first night and something happened to me that first dining that has not happened to me in years and it hasn't happened on my last five MSC cruises. But more about that when we get to dinner because before that we still had a show to go to. The theatre on board the MSC Preziosa is absolutely huge. There are well over a thousand seats and even more modern and bigger cruise ships have theatres that are smaller than this. I really like theatres like this. Every single seat had a great view and the seats were very, very comfortable. The first show was almost entirely in Italian, which did take me by surprise. MSC are an Italian cruise line and there were some Italians on board, but most of the guests were German, French and British, as that is where we picked up new guests. The cruise director came out at the start of the show and she spoke in English, Spanish, French, Italian, German and I think Portuguese. Some people don't like how on MSC cruises everything is done in multiple languages. But it just blows my mind how some people can come out and do that. Even the captain came out and spoke to us in all of these different languages. English definitely was the primary language on board and it has been on every MSC cruise I've taken. Sometimes the staff would start speaking to us in German and the blank looks on our faces would tell them pretty quickly that we didn't understand. The singers in the shows were very talented but I'm quite a visual person and I like colours and costumes and set design and this show didn't really have any of that. I did kind of sit there and think to myself, oh no, what have I got my friends into? This is just like an MSC cruise from 10 or so years ago. 
I hoped that the shows would change to be more what I was used to from an MSC cruise as the cruise went on, and thankfully they did. The rest of the shows were much more what I was expecting based on my MSC cruises in the Caribbean and also around the UK. When I took these two cruises, everything was done in English, and although I did hear a few other languages spoken in the Caribbean, it wasn't really different from a cruise with any other cruise line. Heading to our first dinner on board, and I was very surprised when me and my friends were both seated with different groups of six, table sharing with other guests. There was no mention of table sharing before the cruise, and I normally do opt out of it if I can. We had a fantastic evening though, and we were so unbelievably lucky with our table mates. Hello to Mark and Sarah if you are watching this. I asked my new friend Mark if he was having a good cruise, this was his first cruise, and he said to me, I'm having a great time and I haven't even been on board for 24 hours yet. I told Mark that I would put that quote in this video, so here you go Mark. To say that MSC often receive bad reviews about their food would be putting it lightly. I took my first MSC cruise back in 2012 and my experiences of MSC's food have got better with every cruise since. On my last MSC cruise on the MSC Seaview, we had some really great meals and we never found anything that was wrong with any item of food. That cruise was only at 23% capacity though, so I hope that the food on this cruise will be just as good. My friends do like their food, but they're quite like me in that they don't need it to be particularly fancy. All that we really want is enough options that there's something that we like, portion sizes that are pretty good, and food that is hot. After dinner was the white night in the safari lounge and I accidentally attended in a red dress. It wasn't a problem though. I do often wonder before the cruise how the other guests knew what the theme nights were going to be. The cruise lines don't really tell you and there's certain ones that are normally on certain cruise lines but not everybody is going to know that. Sometimes I wonder if people just have a 70s costume or they just always travel with a cowboy costume. I don't but maybe they do. Our cruise started with a sea day which I love, it gave me a chance to properly explore the ship and I did find my first ever cruising duck. I had no idea that cruising ducks were a thing until recently but basically people buy lots of rubber ducks and they hide them around cruise ships for other guests to find. You can either rehide them or you can keep them and there are these Facebook groups where you share pictures with you and the ducks. It seems like a seriously big thing. Who knew? Because there wasn't an app, each day we would get a paper daily schedule in our cabin and we would take a photo of it on our phones so that we would know what was happening when we were around the ship. MSC definitely don't have as busy a schedule as Royal Caribbean or Norwegian, but they did have things happening around the ship. They had trivia, they had games, they had lots of dance classes. I mostly came on this cruise to spend time with my friends, so I spent a lot of time sitting around in the bars drinking Pepsi Max, and that suited me perfectly. It is worth noting that MSC do automatically add a gratuity or a tip of 15% to every drink if you don't have a drinks package, so two Pepsi Maxes always cost us $6.90. It's in dollars, that's how they do it. I met a lot of lovely people on this cruise and this video and all of my videos is not just my review of a cruise, but it's also everybody I met and everybody's opinion. So thank you to these lovely people who were met on Preziosa. On most cruise lines, you'll assign a credit card to your account when you embark, but MSC do it slightly differently. It's that same thing, a little bit odd, but it works. On an MSC cruise, when you get on board, you have to find these little machines within 48 hours, and that is how you assign your card. It's very, very easy, but it's just different from other cruise lines for some reason. I was amazed by how much I liked this ship. Having been on the bigger and the newer MSC cruise ships, I kind of assumed that I wouldn't like Preziosa as much, but I think I might actually prefer Preziosa over the newer ships like Virtuosa. Preziosa doesn't have a big street in the middle like Virtuosa, and I did miss the Sky Lounge, but we found a lot of nice areas on board, and every single area that we found was just as sparkly as the last one. It was on our first sea day that my loyalty treats arrived in my room. I have the highest loyalty status with MSC, but it's not because I've earned it, it's because MSC match statuses from other cruise lines. It is well worth the freebies for the sake of filling out a form, and now I get free macaroons, free prosecco, free chocolate, all kinds of things. Also in our room was a little piece of paper that said that we'd been moved to early dining and that we were on a table with our friends. Early dining was 5.45 and late was 8.15. If I'm at home, I tend to have dinner around 5.30, so 8.15 to me felt honestly like a bedtime snack. I do accept that 5.45 is quite early, but by the time you sat down, by the time you've got your food, it's a great time to eat. And if you get hungry again, like we did most evenings, we would go to the buffet and we would get snacks. 
I mostly drink peppermint tea and for some reason MSC do peppermint tea better than any other cruise line, even Cunard who are very well known for their tea. I think it's something to do with the temperature of the water, the peppermint can't really change but it might be to do with these mugs, a proper mug. Our main dining room dinner was quite nice and it was quite nice in the British sense of the word quite, not the American sense of the word quite. The food wasn't anything amazing but it was perfectly okay, it was hot, the portion sizes were good and my friend Chris did end up having multiple starters and multiple mains as the cruise went on. He didn't mean to but some sort of communication mix-ups meant that more food would arrive. At one point Chris thought he was being asked if he wanted another beer so he said yes and when another starter arrived he was a bit confused but happily ate it and then had another beer afterwards. The service in the main dining room was always good and the bread was amazing. At two points during this cruise the waiters put on a little bit of a show for us, one where they all sang and the second where we were introduced to the crew. One thing that is a little bit odd about MSC Cruises is that because everybody is getting on and off every single day, there isn't really a welcome on board or a thank you for cruising with us day like there might be on other cruise lines. Sometimes you'll watch a show on day three of your cruise that really sounds like it's the end show because it is for some people but you've still got the rest of your cruise to go. Next up on the schedule was a show called Treasure Island and it told the story of Billy Bones the Pirate. I have to admit when they got to the end of the show and they said that's the story of Billy Bones, I was like what? Who? There was a story? I didn't get it at all. But what I like from a show, this show had. It was very colourful, it was very fun to watch, it was a mix of acrobatics, dancing, singing, magic, you name it, they went all in on this show. It was definitely more what I expect from recent MSC cruises, their entertainment definitely has improved in the last few years, it's still bizarre, it's definitely bizarre and I think it always will be, but it's entertaining, that's what you want from entertainment. <laughs> I would describe MSC shows as may seem crazy and I did spend a lot of time on this cruise thinking about what MSC could stand for. It stands for Mediterranean Shipping Company technically but that's not really as fun as maybe sort of chaotic. If you can think of any MSCs let me know in the comments. We ended our evening in the way that we normally did and that was at the Pizzeria. MSC's pizza is very very good and I would put it just below Princess in terms of quality but way above Princess in terms of access to pizza. You could get pizza round the clock. I don't know if they ever closed it but I never found it closed. They don't just have normal pizza there either, like a margarita, a pepperoni or a Hawaiian. I had pizza that had seeds on it, I had charcoal pizza, I tried all kinds of things and all of them with ketchup of course, pizza definitely needs ketchup. At that point I was reminded how different MSC cruises are to other cruise lines. When we went back to our cabin I saw suitcases lining the corridor and normally you'd only see this on the last day of the cruise and it was the last day of the cruise for these people but it wasn't for us. That's kind of a nice feeling. Our first stop was in Hamburg in Germany followed by Bruges in Belgium and Le Havre in France. Both Hamburg and Bruges are quite far from the port so you need some mode of transport to get into the city. In Hamburg we used the MSC shuttle for 11 euros each and in Bruges we used the Cruise Express bus. I met up with my lovely friend Morgan from Morgan's Very Unofficial Travel Guides in Hamburg and he gave us a tour of his hometown. Morgan is an American who now lives in Germany and he recently took a cruise on Wonder of the Seas which you can see on his channel. I've just booked a cruise on Symphony of the Seas so we chatted about the big big cruise ships and we had fantastic weather, thank you for that Morgan. Just check below that you were subscribed so that you don't miss my Symphony content. Symphony of the Seas is 60% bigger than the MSC Preziosa, a big big ship. Our trip to Hamburg was actually interrupted by a World War II bomb but more about that later. In Bruges we bought some Belgium chocolate, we stopped for a drink, we wandered around the beautiful little streets and I found this horse statue which did make me laugh. I also ate a chocolate seahorse. Let me know if you would eat the seahorse, the unicorn, the footballer or the dragon or all four. There were lots of horses in Bruges and they all had their blinkers or blinders on and that leads me nicely into this week's Britishism of the week. Here in the UK the little lights that flash on a car to show which way you're going, they're called indicators. In the US as far as I can tell you call them blinkers or turn signals. It is always indicators here. I'm not much of a breakfast person but I always made sure I had it on the port days. The donuts were absolutely my favourite but I still can't get my head around the fact that in some places donuts are considered a breakfast food but when on a cruise of course you do eat donuts for breakfast and I absolutely love it. 
We found the food in the buffet to be good. There was loads and loads of choice and the buffet was really spread out. So there was always places to sit. It didn't feel anywhere near as busy as some of the other cruise ships that I've been on, even though this ship was at full capacity. In reality, it was around 82%. But of course this changed as more people got on and more people got off. As the cruise went on, I did use my balcony, but mostly just to kind of check what the weather was like before going off for the day. None of the ports that we visited were very picturesque and it was too chilly to spend too much time on the balcony. Plus my balcony was very kind of protected being at the front, so the sun could never really get in. I did love having daylight though and having the extra space was very helpful. I spent a lot of time on this cruise working around here and from the bed which was very very comfortable. I'm not sure why they put this huge mirror opposite the bed but who am I to judge on their decisions? It made the room feel very very spacious. I bought the Surf and Stream Wi-Fi package and to be honest it wasn't worth upgrading to include that stream part. Although in theory I could stream, I never ever had internet fast enough to actually stream anything. The best Wi-Fi speed I had on this entire cruise was 2 megabytes, and that was when I was in port anyway so I could use the 4G. My Wi-Fi at home is almost 200 times faster than it was on the cruise. So it worked well for kind of checking my emails, working on my website and my social accounts, but I definitely couldn't stream anything. 64% of the cabins on this ship do have balconies and I definitely wouldn't have paid to upgrade on an itinerary like this. My guess is that most people thought the same, Northern Europe in October I don't need a balcony, hence why they had this upgrade promotion. MSC's plan of course is to sell the cruise cheaply to get as many people on board as possible and then to make them spend money on board. I did decide to have a little gamble in the casino but I only ever gamble $10 per cruise and on this cruise I actually won $40. I won on this cruise and my last cruise which is bizarre. I'm sure overall I'm still down but my luck definitely seems on the up which is good. The casino was a fair size, but so much smaller than the casino on my last carnival cruise. On my carnival cruise, the casino was full at every hour of the day, and on MSC, it was so much calmer and it wasn't ever busy. Guests can smoke in the casino, and it really did smell of smoke. It's not something that I normally notice, but it really did smell. The good thing though was because of the location of this casino, you could completely avoid it if you wanted to. On my carnival cruise, you were constantly walking through the casino, but MSE's was kind of tucked away. It was good. There was also a big smoking area right up by the main pool deck and others around the ship. The percentage of people that smoke in Germany and Italy is higher than in the UK and the US, so bigger smoking areas does make sense. Guests can't smoke on their balconies on an MSC cruise, unlike the other Italian cruise line Costa where guests still can. Apart from my $10 gambling budget the only other thing I spent money on during this cruise was soft drinks and a little bit in the gift shop. MSC do include tips when booking a cruise from the UK so I didn't have to add on an automatic gratuity like you do on a lot of other cruise lines. I bought a couple of little squirty squashes to drink in my cabin so I didn't actually drink a lot of Pepsi and my personal onboard spend came to less than £100. £320 for a six night cruise, £100 spent on board, a pound is basically a dollar these days so that's not very much. Aside from the main dining room and the buffet, there was one other place where you could eat that was included in the cruise fare. It was the sports bar and I didn't know about this one until I saw pictures from my friends Johnny and Will who went and I thought where did they get those onion rings? And I found them too. In the sports bar you could get burgers, you could get chicken nuggets, you could get chips and there was a veggie burger on the menu too so I was very happy. We ate our meal next to the bowling alley and MSC do have other things like Formula One simulators. You have to pay for those though so of course I didn't but they always seem very popular. There's always someone on them. I did worry that the lack of an app would be annoying and I did find it annoying in a few ways. I like to be on a cruise to check how much I've spent. I like to see oh where are the nearest toilets? Oh they're over there, I'll go that way we didn't have any of that on this cruise. Not a huge problem but MSC definitely could have made this cruise better if they just backdated their app. You also couldn't see your onboard account on the cabin TV or if you could I never found it so I didn't want to keep going to reception to get printouts of my onboard account. I did find a way to do it though. MSC have these machines around and if you scan your card it will tell you how much you've spent and where you've spent it. My friend Ruth did see on these machines that she had a drink charged to her account that she 
shouldn't have been there. So we went straight to reception. There was no queue, no line at all at around 3 p.m. The person working there was very friendly, very polite. They just took off the transaction. And I'm glad that we did it then rather than waiting to the end. Overall, this cruise was pretty relaxing, but there was one thing that I think the word dramatic describes it best. When we were trying to get back to the cruise ship in Hamburg, there was a World War II bomb that was being defused and they closed the port completely. To find out how that went and why it couldn't have happened at a worse time for me, watch this video next. 